Today, we will hear statements by the honorable members for the district of Fairland, Cape St. Francis, Terra Nova, Conception Bay South, Buren Grand Bank, and St. John's West with leave. The honorable, the member for Fairland. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize all volunteer fire departments in the Fairland District and the members who served in the past and serve today. These include Goulds, Wetless Bay, Fairland, Vermeuse, Port Curran, Portugal Cove South, St. Shots, and Trapassi. I want to acknowledge and say thank you to our many volunteers, as well as those over the years who have given so much to the region's protection and well-being. The hours that each firefighter firefighter volunteer gives peace of mind to the residents of our communities and ensures they have someone to rely on in the event of a fire or any type of emergency. The volunteer firefighters have performed many heroic and life-saving acts over the years and are, are to be commended for their dedication and commitment. There are many challenges that first responders face today in carrying out their duties. However, our firefighters can continue to do remarkable work and have lived up to that challenge. I want to also recognize the partners, spouses, and families of the members for their continued support. I ask all members in this House to join me in recognizing our volunteer fire departments and the amazing job they do. Thank you. The Honorable the Member for Cape St. Francis. Mr. Speaker, today I recognize an annual event in my district, as well as the neighboring district of Conception of East Bell Island. Since 2006, the Killick Coast Games are scheduled for one week in August and is a fun-filled, spirited week of friendly competition for children between the ages of 11 and 17. The first games were held in the town of Torbay 15 years ago with approximately 200 participants. Hosting of the games rotate between municipalities and is supported by many of the athletes' family and friends. The last games were held in 2019 in Portugal Cove St. Phillips with over 600 young athletes competing in five different sports. This year, the town of Logie Bay Middle Cove Outer Cove will host from August 15th to the 28th to ensure that the COVID-19 safety, COVID safety plan is followed. As a parent of two former Killy Coast athletes, I can attest to the importance of such an event to a young person's well-being and social development in taking part in organized sports. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to volunteering at this year's Killick Coast Games, and I ask that all honourable members join me in wishing great success to this year's host town of Logie Bay Middle Cove Outer Cove, and of course, all the athletes. Thank you. The Honourable the Member for Terra Nova. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, June is Recreation Month, and I would like to recognize the efforts of the Town of Glovertown and its Recreation Department. Glovertown takes recreation serious and has a keen interest in getting their 2,000 plus residents active and living healthy lifestyles. Perhaps the most successful and longest running activities are their biking programs, Sprock Kids and Adventure Biking. 350 plus kids from the Glover Town and surrounding communities across the region register yearly. These programs focus on bike safety, riding a variety of trains, survival and cooking skills, team building exercises, and most importantly, having fun. Over the past six years, their biking programs have been recognized provincially and nationally, featured in the Provincial Guide to Biking and the Canadian Cycling Magazine, and they have been asked to present at the annual Atlantic Recreation and Facilities Con Conference. Their model is, to use, is used by Bicycle NL and school sports throughout the province. Special thanks goes to Pam Thornhill, the town's recreation director, and Andy Poole, along with a complement of volunteers that ensured their success. During this month, I'd like to recommend that everybody run, bike, dance, walk, skateboard, swim, do some yoga or tai chi, cut a cord of wood, play hopscotch, kayak, or even thumb wrestle. The possibilities are endless. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable the Member of Conception Bay South. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to recognize Conception Bay South Fire Department. Found in 1973, it has evolved from a volunteer-only organization to a composite fire department that operates 24-7 with almost 50 volunteer and career firefighters who respond, on average, to 1,000 emergency calls per year. The department has achieved many firsts in the province over the last number of years, specific to the mental health of its members. In partnership with the Canadian Mental Health Association, the Conception Bay South Fire Department will be the first in the province to deliver the Resilient Minds program. Resilient Minds is an evidence-informed, peer-to-peer, skill-building program designed by firefighters across Canada to develop strategies to mitigate 
and better manage occupational health and stress and enhance personal resilience, resulting in informed and healthier teams. This program has already began its delivery in Exception Base South through Department Member Fire Captain Richard Hines, who is a certified instructor to the Canadian Mental Health Association in, in this program. This training will continue over the next couple of weeks to include all members of Exception Base South Fire Department. Mr. Speaker, please join me in congratulating Fire Chief John Effernan for his dedication to Exception Base South Fire Department members and raising mel mental health awareness with all its members. Thank you very much. The Honourable, the Member for Buren, Grand Bank. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, I would like to recognize in this House Mr. William Butt, who was born in 1937 in Grand Bank, but now resides in Fortune with his wife of 65 years, Hattie. Mr. Butt worked with CN for 50 years as an engineer on the MV Atlantic Freighter. It was during this time that his ship made many trips through the Persian Gulf carrying supplies during the Gulf War. In April of this year, Mr. Butt was recognized for his efforts and achievements for the role he played in Defense of Canada and was presented with the Department of Defense challenge coin given to him by Minister, the Minister of National Defense. He received an expeditionary award from the United States Merchant Marines for his contributions supporting American and international coalition military forces in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm in the waters of Southwest Asia. We thank you, Mr. William Butt, for your sacrifice and the role you have made and played in advancing peace for our country, Canada. Mr. Speaker, I ask all honourable members to join with me in thanking Mr. William Butt for his service. The Honourable, the member for St. John's West with lead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I pay tribute to the life of the late Gerald Thompson of Grand Falls, Windsor. Gerald was born in Botwood in 1943 to Lloyd and Lillian Thompson. It was there that his sense of community service and helping others began. Gerald was husband to Ruth, father to Wade, Peter, Kelly and Jim, grandfather to 15 and great-grandfather to seven. He was also a good friend and an exceptional community leader. Winston Churchill once said, you make a living by what you get, you make a life by what you give. Gerald's community service, leadership and volunteerism has had a profound effect on his community and his province. Gerald's career spanned many years. He worked for CJON, Beothic Ford and Dixon Company. Most recently, he served as executive director of the Exploits Regional Chamber of Commerce. He worked diligently to support his community and to promote and improve its economic prosperity. As a community leader, Gerald gave tirelessly of his time and his talents. He was a member of the Memorial United Church and served the Masonic Lodge North Cliff for over 40 years. His other passions included writing poems, painting, cooking, and local politics. I ask all members to join me in celebrating the life of Gerald Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.